Hey, Christy. You're on mute. Are you uh, going to pick up Ryan? I think you are. <laughs> Hey, good evening. Hello. So you're uh, you got a you got a trip to faraway places coming up. I'm actually there now. Oh, you are. Yeah, it's five a.m. in India. <laughs> wow. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a good flight? It was good. It uh, took me a couple of days to kind of get from being upside down, but it was good. It was well taken care of by the company. They, they fly you better than uh, the military used to. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Um, how many legs, where'd you go? London and then uh, another trip? It was uh, 12 hours Boston to Dubai and then four hours Dubai to Bangalore. Okay. Yeah, that... 12 hours to Dubai, I've done that one. That's a burner. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, 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 that's a wake up call after you get off of that plane. Yep. So we, we got Christy, got Mr. Dave Mangan, Bill Curran. Six two five oh. Let me check this thing out. Bob Tracy. All right. So we're going to show the cap. We're going to show the captioning. There we go. It's easier to record. So we got Dan, Paul, Bill Curran, Joe. Still missing Joe. And Rob is here. Mark is here. And how's anybody seen Sean? No. Yeah, it was 20 hours to Bangkok for me back 50 years ago. I think they can do it now in about uh, 19. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was talking to somebody uh, that I know who was in the Air Force, and he said something similar. It was like a 22-hour flight to somewhere. He said, the beauty of that is I could get drunk twice on the plane. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. And pass out and come back again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the old days. Good old days. Yeah, we got Mike. So I guess we're missing uh, is Joe, Mike, and there's Bill. Okay. And Sean. And I haven't seen Sean. Joe, Mike, and Sean. 
Marion, how you doing? Good, how are you? All right. Good. I missed you on Veterans Day. Yeah, well, <laughs> I would like to have been there too. I heard it was really special. I heard it was a really good event. I would have liked to have been there, but I enjoyed myself at the State House instead. <laughs> did they yeah. give you, did you have a seat when you got there? Oh yeah, we had we had we had reserve seats for the uh, Gold Star Wives. I let them know how many had said they were coming, wow. and it was I was glad I was there, especially because, as you know, Paul, one of our Gold Star Wives received the brand new uh, Medal of Fidelity, and um, it was very special to see her get that because she's been fighting for it since 2019, and she's been one of those people that have been at gone to the board many times fighting for that medal. So uh, to see her get it as one of the first receivers was really special. She was okay. a nervous wreck, <laughs> but it was nice. Yeah, a lot of us were nervous wrecks after that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I read about it in the paper and I heard from other people. It was a really nice ceremony. I wish I could have been there. Okay. So we're missing Sean, and I think Joe is here, but we got a quorum. So yep. let's go ahead and we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. I've got the, uh, the American hey. Caucus right here. So we, we'll start and open the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And then the republic, public, which, which is says one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thank you very much. So to start, do we have a uh, any questions on the minutes from the month of October? And if there's no questions on the minutes, do we have a motion to approve the minutes from the month of October? I second the motion of the motion. Well, there's gotta be a motion before you can second it. Motion. Motion. <laughs> second. Second. Thank you, Joe. Um, all right. Approval of the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstain? Any nays? Okay, so passed. Um, and Robert, I guess you're okay with doing the minutes and sending them over to uh, Sherry? Yes, sir. From your, you got a lot of miles on those things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, next up is uh, we'll get to the VSO report here and the uh, the mighty Dave Mangan, our veteran service officer, is up. Hello and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The VSO report for November 15, 2022. The Greater Boston Food Bank is tomorrow, Wednesday, November 15th, from 9.30 to 12 noon. We now have 22 participants in the generous program offered by the Greater Boston Food Bank and the Wakefield Food Pantry. This program takes the edge off the increase in all aspects of our economy to help the veterans, the spouses, and families in very many ways. Veterans Day last Thursday and Friday from the perspective of the Galvin in the Woodville Elementary School was spectacular, including the Friday ceremony, uh, including in it was Mr. Paul Fazzini, who was awarded the Korean Ambassador for Peace Medal in the presence of the community. His continued community service, not only as a veteran, but as a member in the Council of Gifts for many years, shows his dedicated service to Wakefield and to the nation. The Roll to Washington wrap-up and awards ceremony was held this evening at the Saugus VFW, post 2346. All the partic participants from Saugus, Wakefield, and Melrose who ventured on the trip of a lifetime were given photo CDs of the trip, along with recognition for their service to America and their communities. A huge kudos goes out to the community, uh, the committee members, Stacy Mancello, 
Erica Brown, Jay Panette, Dennis Gould, and your humble servant, Dave Mangan, for the hard work and organizational skills in making this event such a success. The Youth Council. The Youth Council of Wakefield, headed by Catherine Dingra, has once again put forth the cleaning of the parks and courts, raising money this time for the Veterans Relief Fund. Through the efforts of the Wakefield Youth Council, the funding is for veterans or spouses of veterans in need within the community. The sponsors will donate up to $5 per pound of trash that they uh, will pick up. Thank you, Catherine and the Youth Council for such a great job in thinking of our veterans. On the coffee social, the monthly veterans coffee social, although was held Saturday the 12th, the day after Veterans Day, was uh, attended by a small, slight amount. Uh, they were brought up to speed on the PACT Act and the presumptive illnesses that occurred from exposure to various chemical components. We also had a guest speaker, Linda Malcolm, who explained the various approaches that are being considered for the upcoming series, A Room to Write. Honeydew on the Lake provided the coffee and donuts. Thank you, Derek, and the team at Honeydew. Chapter 115. We currently have 13 clients on the Chapter 115 program and have been reaching out to the several outlets, including the newsletter at the Senior Center. And the recertification for this program happens twice a year, in January and June. So we are about to send out the letters to our clients to comply with the required documents needed to ensure they get all the benefits they're entitled to. The Medal of Fidelity can now be applied for for those who have passed due to a service-connected death after the wartime period, such as from Agent Orange or burn pit exposures. With 100% disabled veterans, they are also entitled to a twice a year annuity of $1,000, January and August, which along with the 115 is tax free. Under chapter 115 of the Massachusetts General Laws, the combo provides uniform program of financial and medical assistance for veterans and their dependents. Qualifying veterans and independents receive necessary financial assistance for food, shelter, clothing, fuel, and medical care in accordance with a formula that takes into consideration the number of dependents and income from all sources. The maximum income under number in a family of one would be $2,265. For two, it's $3,052. There was a change sent across my desk this evening, though, and it has changed. The, uh, the amount's going up. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's going up. It's got two, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, it hasn't gone up yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> the asset limits have gone up. The asset limits have gone up to 16,600 for married and 8,400 for single. Uh, with the, uh, the cost of living adjustments being made as well. Uh, there's an 8.9% increase coming up starting in January. Uh, for more information to apply, please contact my office at 781-246-6377. Thank you. Thank you, David. Any questions for the VSO on his report? Okay. With none, I... The report is accepted and we'll, we will include that in the minutes. Thank you. Uh, the next Veterans Coffee Social, David. That's going to be held on Saturday, <clears throat> December. I, I should have mentioned that. I'm sorry. I have it right here on this calendar. I can pull it up. Uh, December 17th, the third Saturday. So that's also wreath day at Forest Glen. Uh, it is, isn't it? Uh, okay, yes. that's not happening then. <laughs> You're right, it is wreath day. We do both, if you just move it later, that's all. What time yeah, do we the wreath? January. Um, the, the wreath ceremony is at noon at uh, Forest Glade. Okay. Okay, we can cut the short, we can cut the coffee social short. By, by 45 minutes to an hour. That's not a problem. I usually okay. do it from 10 to noon uh, just to give us some room, but it never goes that long. So we'll keep it on, we'll keep the coffee social on the 17th as well. It'll just be from 10 to 11. 
I, I that's a good idea. Um, nice place to go to get coffee and donuts before you stand out in the cold. Bingo. <laughs> Any other discussion on uh, the David, coffee? David, what did you say the time what you're going to do for the coffee social? 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. OK, thank Saturday, you. December 17th. OK, thank you. Yep. And do you have a speaker or a topic for that coffee social? Not yet, I don't, but I'm working on it. OK. I'll have something by the end of the week. And I'll make the flyer up, and I'll send it out to the uh, appropriate people to email us. <clears throat> Very good. Any questions for David? Uh, at this time, I just want to introduce Mark Young, our newest member to the uh, Veterans Advisory Board. Mark? Thank you. Uh, maybe you can introduce yourself. Um, we have not met you, but uh, uh, you can share your military experience and what you'd like to get out of your time on the board. Sure. Um, my name is Mark Young. I'm a lifelong resident of Wakefield. Um, graduated in the class of 2000. Um, eight, day, <clears throat> excuse me, eight days after I graduated high school, I went off to basic training in Great Lakes, Illinois for the U.S. Navy. I uh, was stationed on the USS O'Bannon, which is a Spruance class destroyer in Mayport, Florida. And I spent four years as a damage controlman making a second class petty officer. And uh, yeah, I just, I, Felt like uh, I heard there was an opening on the Veterans Advisory Board and uh, it, was, it piqued my interest. I thought you know, veterans is something that I think that everybody in this country owes a thanks to and we've all benefited from their service. And, uh, you know, it's a way to give back in a uh, non-military sense. And, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm anxious to be on the board and, and to learn from all of you and uh, to, you know, uh, benefit veterans in the, in the community. Well, welcome, welcome aboard. board. Welcome, welcome, welcome aboard, Mark. Thank you. Welcome, Mark. I just might note there, I guess the, the USS Hudner is based at Mayport also? It, it, yeah, it is. Yes, it is. It was not there when I was there, but um, yes. Uh, and I actually am uh, a classmate of uh, Commander Nicotin, who is the commanding officer. Very good. Just, just uh, my own two cents. My oldest son is a graduate of... Uh, Wakefield High School, 2002. So, you guys were doing something right. I think we might have passed uh, passed in the hallways a time or two. That I'm I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm sure he played soccer. I have a, my cousin graduated in uh, 2002, the same class. So I'm sure that we uh, know some mutual people. Very good. Very good. So thank uh, you. Okay. Well, welcome. And and it's. Uh, it's encouraging to get some new perspective on the board. Thank you. Thank you as well. And and don't be shy. Okay. <laughs> Feel free to chime in. <laughs> okay. Um, so, fee any feedback on uh, Veterans Day programs that uh, that went on? And and let me just uh, kind of an easy way to do this is is an army thing that we did and that is we go around the room and in an AAR format which is after action review format and if there's something you had to improve or something you had to uh, that you want to sustain um, and I just maybe just go around the box here um, in terms of what went well and, and what we could probably improve on and uh, I'm going to start I'm just going to go around the box and start with Robert I can't think of anything that I would improve. I mean, I, I think it looked like a better crowd than we'd had in recent years. Uh, it was nice to see the room uh, wasn't full, but it was a good crowd in there. Um, I love the, the the presence of the National Guard out front, gave it a nice sort of official touch. Um, you know, the, the the town really well, you know, supported it. I, I thought it was great, I really did. I, I don't have any complaints. I'd, I'd tell you, I can't think of anything. Okay. So National Guard, get some more soldiers, airmen, sailors into the program. Uh, I'll bounce over to David. Anything to improve? Anything to sustain? You're on mute, Dave. You're on mute. 
All right. I said, can you get a better speaker? <laughs> oh, he was fabulous. He was fantastic. Yeah. I think that, uh, and as Bob said, is uh, it was the best one we, I've ever been associated with over the four years I've been here. Uh, it, the crowds got bigger. Even Jay Panette gave kudos to you, Paul, your organizational skills, and put it together the way you did. Uh, he realized there was a lot going on to it. Uh, I get I can't think of anything else we could have done better, actually. I mean, think about it. I mean, the kids did great. It was coordinated. It was orchestrated well. Let's put it that way. I cannot think of anything else we could have added or taken away from that that would have made it any better than it was. Okay. Mr. Benjamin, Daniel. Hi, Lois. Oh, yeah. Lois is hiding behind those trees. I know that. I, 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 um, I think Lois has one little thing to say to you. Okay. Uh, well, I have to say that I'm so proud to have been there with your assistance. You made me feel really happy that I had decided that we should do this. And it, you were so good. And I also wanted to add all the veterans um, on the board. I'm glad to have been among them. And, and you are fantastic to me. And I'd just like to add, thank you for treating both of us so well. And uh, thank you, Dave, for those flowers. And uh, it really, okay. it, it was something special to me and it was something special to, to Lois and something special to all the veterans in Wakefield. And there's a lot of people looking down at that field that day saying, thank you for remembering us. When that, I'll tell you, Dan, when that uh, crossing gate was stuck down below and it came down and no train went by that made it go down and it never went up until the police chief went over and had some people called in. I swear it was a ghost train of all the departed veterans that went by to see that. <laughs> and that's fine. The right. It was perfect. It was perfect. It was perfect. Mark, I don't know if you attended, but uh, I, I, was at, I, I, was, I was at both and I thought they were great. The only thing that I could say that I um, would improve on that. I think the ceremony at the Galvin was um, was very well done. I can't think of anything that would be improve it. Um, it was fantastic. The um, the only thing that I had a trouble I had trouble hearing um, the speakers. I know that the microphone was was probably um, you know useless because of the traffic and the, and the, and the, you know the open air and everything. But um, it was a little difficult hearing the the, the ceremony from the the vets field. Um, so if I had any, um, you know, uh, things that I could improve on, maybe possibly, uh, you know, if I, yeah, I, I, my daughter plays music, I would be happy to donate the speakers that she uses if next year, if we do another, uh, public ceremony, uh, anything, you know, just to maybe be able to hear it better. Yeah. I think WCAT could have brought out a speaker, uh, to have outside that, that I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll ditto with Mark on that. I was only at the, uh, I guess I'll take my turn now while I'm talking. <laughs> um, I was only at the unveiling of the sign and um, I thought it went really well. Yeah, it was just the, the noise, but you know, you had the traffic and everything. So, you know, it's, it's obviously gonna be difficult there, but I think overall, you know, we managed it pretty well. Like there were good pauses, you know, when there was, you know, somebody in there really loud, you know, <laughs> vehicle that would, decide to, uh, you know, fly by or uh, some of the trucks that flew, um, drove by. But um, yeah, I thought it went really well. The sign came out great. Um, yeah, I thought it was great. Sorry, I couldn't attend the, uh, the actual ceremony. I had to go back to work, so. No, that's okay. Thank you for making the nine o'clock. That was good. Joe, any comments and feedback? Yeah, I, I was at both as well and I would have the same uh, feedback just from the sign unveiling, you know, it was just, um, 
a, a little hard to hear at times. I had Jay Panette in front of me too, so maybe he was blocking some of the some of the noise there. But I um, uh, thought the sign looked outstanding. Um, I was really I, I knew it looked good, but I didn't think it would look that good. Um, so that was uh, really cool. And then at, at the Galvin, um, I. I hadn't been to one before, so I don't really have a frame of reference other than, I guess, kind of growing up and going to them as uh, kids in, in another town. Uh, but great, uh, looked like a great, like uh, the speaker that we had wasn't wasn't a veteran, but could family serve as veterans. I think, you know, connecting that with the community because we have a lot of folks that may not have been a veteran, but they have family members that were. So I think that was... I think that our guest speaker really uh, resonated with uh, the. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Christy. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm good. Any, any comments on Veterans Day? Um, I thought it was great. I didn't make the nine o'clock, but I was at the Galvin for the ceremony at 11. But what I really took away from it, there was a lot of empty seats and that really bummed me out. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, that's just food for thought. I mean, nothing we can do, but I'm just saying it really just, it was kind of surprising that this community didn't pack the place. Well, that's awesome. When Veterans Day falls on a Friday on a three-way weekend like that, I know people probably go away. They do. They do. It's odd, but yeah, we packed it. The kids both days with the uh, the middle school kids, the different grade levels. They packed the school, and That's awesome. uh, and even over at the Woodville, four hundred and fifty uh, first, second, third, and fourth graders was amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, it was good. It was good. So I don't think Mike Owen has shown up, but uh, his uh, his reading of the governor's proclamation was something else. That was awesome. He did a great job. Really, really did it. Mr. Walsh's Mr. Walsh's Walsh Flan Flanders Field poem. He didn't read that. He did. He said that whole thing by heart. Yes, he did. Yes. And I said to him, "How do you remember all that that poem so eloquently?" He said, well, I've been doing it for about 25 years. He said, but if I make a mistake, no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> he says he never has, but if he did, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be effective. <laughs> I just, uh, Bob, you uh, spoke at the first one. Any comments from the first one and the, and the second uh, performance? Yeah, um, <clears throat> well, actually, there was no microphone for us. So... WCAT, the microphone they had there is only for purposes of what they're going to put on the TV. So I did talk to Steve Mayo afterwards. And next year, if we have an outdoor event, the town will make sure it provides a speaker. Because when you're up there speaking and you realize there is no speaker and you're trying to talk all over all that um, traffic, you really have to elevate your voice. I, I went after the rabbi, so I got a chance to see how much he raised his voice and it reminded me I needed to raise my voice. But that, that was definitely a challenge. I will say that um, I was incredibly impressed with both ceremonies. I ob obviously was very privileged and honored to be able to speak at the nine o'clock unveiling. Um, if you get a chance to look at town council meeting last night, you'll see that when we do announcements at the end, I actually address the town council and I said, but I want to address you as a veteran and not a member of the town council. And I took my little nameplate and flipped it over. And I took my US, USS Harry S. Truman ball cap out and put it on. And then I spent the next couple of minutes talking about you, Paul, and you, Dave, and the rest of the Veterans Advisory Board for the just absolutely outstanding work that you guys did on both events. And Paul, I got such an appreciation how you were the master of ceremonies for both events, two hours apart, and how you got the community involved in at the Galvin. I think getting those high school students, the singers, the band 
involved in that process is incredibly important for um for society as a whole but wakefield in particular because you know we don't have a lot of people percentage-wide serving in the military right now so i think that what you guys did was first rate and the comment about that there were empty seats at the galvin i will tell you there were a lot more people there than will be at town meeting on saturday <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, I I will say this, and it, I, I I can't let this go unsaid. Uh, Jay Panette was uh, very very articulate in in putting those programs together, um, and he put those programs together for Memorial Day and Veterans Day during some tough times. Um, and he would share that with a couple members of the board in terms of the detailed planning, uh, specifically the agendas. Um, and, and he didn't let a lot of information leak out uh, before the events. He just shared with the people that needed to know, uh, you know, the information uh, up front. And that kind of left an element of uh, spontaneity and surprise. Um, for those that were participating and those in attendance. Um, but the one thing that both Jay and I do share uh, in our philosophy, I guess, is anytime you can get three generations in a room uh, for a military event with veterans, I, I think you're gonna get a home run, okay? Um, and what I mean by that is if you can get the students, that, like Bob said, you can get the parents and you can get those that have served. So those that are curious, maybe want to serve, those that are perhaps currently serving and those that have, have already served, um, that's a very good uh, audience to have. Um, and, and I think that uh, as I go forward here, um, you know, I, I, I think that's an important message for the public. Um, so, uh, and I, I would also like to just mention that I am trying to get the Massachusetts uh, uh, military contingent, those that are currently in the uh, recruiting stations for the military, the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, the Coast Guard, the Marine Corps, um, the recruiters need to have an open door to our schools. And, and uh, the recruiters from the Massachusetts National Guard were available um, soldiers from some of the units were also available, and I, um, I appreciate their time on their day off to come and participate. Um, that also made an impression. So, uh, yeah, I was pleased with it. I have not heard any negative. I think the two points about the speaker uh, outside for outdoor ceremonies is good, and 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 also, uh, I don't know, Christy, empty seats, I kind of agree with Bob. <laughs> There's probably gonna be more people that attended the Veterans Day program than, than are gonna attend town meeting on Saturday, but we'll see, maybe maybe we're wrong. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you all for your support. Hey, sorry, Paul, I gotta, uh, I gotta leave. I have an online lecture gotta go to. I just wanna say you guys all did a great job uh, for all those who are more involved in the uh, ceremony and everything. So tie yourselves in the back. I thought we did a great job. Bill, thank you. Thank you. Go, Sorry, guys. Go learn something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick of learning. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Um, the next item that I have is I want to follow up on the uh, uh, disabled veterans benefits uh, that are linked to the cost of living allowance. I did bring that up to the representatives that were at the events on Friday. And um, that, that is something that uh, both of them uh, that were there agreed we need to um, raise under the new administration. Um, there are bills that uh, were filed with uh, Senator Lewis that, that were stuck in committee. Um, but I think we have enough information about how to get that out of committee right now 
and uh, I will say this, the um, Senator Lewis, one of his, uh, his uh, when dealing with his office, I deal with um, Rob Saylor and uh, Rob has really been an, a huge advocate uh, on behalf of veterans, veterans programs, veteran services uh, in uh, Senator Lewis's office. And uh, if there's anything that uh, we need to do to get on the calendar, Rob Saylor is definitely uh, willing to help us to do that. And, and uh, Senator Lewis is also uh, willing to meet with us on, on that particular issue. But I'm, I'm very, very much involved. And I would like to also introduce to Rob Saylor some other resources for information that would help get this through committee to get approved because I think uh, Sam Stella's point two months ago about uh, not tying the uh, the veterans benefit to the cost of living allowance was was spot on and, and it's uh, something that needs to be done as we go down the road in the future. It's not that difficult to do, but it is a little bit of work uh, down in the state house and I'm willing well, to do that. Go ahead. Well are you referring to, I think, the tax, uh, the, uh, the taxes on, on homes, whatnot, hasn't been what raised? I, yeah, I'm, what I'm referring to is the, dis the uh, disabled veterans uh, property tax benefit that they have. Because okay. there is a COLA adjustment going up for the regular disabled veteran, be it homeowner or not, 8.9% uh, 8, 8 uh, coming into uh, the 1st of January. Right, but that's uh, based on inflation. I think the uh, this right. also per, th this also pertains to the property tax benefit that we get, which is a straight flat line uh, benefit that's mapped to your disability. Right, it hasn't changed in years. Which has not changed in in almost two decades, as far yeah. as I'm yeah. as far as I understand. And and the point that was brought up is that that needs to be tied to the cost of living allowance as our taxes increase so should the benefit for your property tax right. that's the, that's the point that was made and there's no disagreement with the representatives that i presented that to on friday but we have to do the uh we got to get the work on paper and and that has to get passed uh down, down in the, the state. state of massachusetts i believe right the state yeah. of mass that's a state benefit right state benefit Um, so I will, I'm going to pursue that with our legislators. Um, and each of you are welcome to do that. And I, and I will share with you how we go about that process and some of the content that's involved in that. Um, and one of the agencies that I can reach out to that can help us is, um, the, uh, Department of Defense has a state liaison office and, uh, there's a state liaison team for Massachusetts that can help us out um, to craft the information uh, so that we can get that benefit on the chart. Um, so that's something that I'm able to, to do and I'll, I'll be glad to include that documentation in correspondence with, uh, with the board as we go forward on that. Um, any questions on that? That was, Dave, that was a good question. Any other questions on that benefit? that you guys might have. Um, the next item that I have is, uh, bylaws may not be the right word, but the creation of a written document, call it a charter, call it bylaws, call it a, a standard operating procedure. I just would like to have a small document, probably no more than two pages, that is uh, linked to our, our town bylaws. Um, that, that, that kind of sort of outlines our, um, the way we function as a board. And it's a very simple document. That's kind of what I'm going to do um, after Thanksgiving and before our next meeting. And I would like to work with uh, Bob just to kind of get that back and forth to you to see if we can get that in there. I, I, I have learned from town council that uh, bylaws may not be the right word. Um, uh, and I understand. Uh, uh, I understand that, um, 
but we just need to have something uh, so that the board has a, a set of guidelines to govern with. That's all. Um, very simple process. And it does fall in line with chapter nine from the town of Wakefield. <clears throat> um, Paul, on lines, Paul, on the same lines, um, does every board have to have a mission statement also? Well, mission, uh, no, not every, not every board has to have a mission statement under the <coughs> Wakefield chapter nine. But a mission statement or uh, something to that effect, uh, it, I, I feel is necessary uh, for your, for existence. And it's just, uh, uh, it, it's a matter of good practice. Okay. Uh, All the boards would... has a mission statement, you know, a sentence, a little paragraph, but just, you know, we're here for a reason. That's right. No, I, I agree with that. And, and it, uh, it's also something to go back to. Um, should we kind of get, you know, off, uh, you know, off, off a tangent on, on what we're doing and, and, and what our purpose is in town. The key word, though, is advisory. Uh, we, we should serve to advise not only the veteran service officer and the things that he does, but we also advise the town council, okay, in terms of what the, the veteran's perspective is on decisions that they need to make, okay? Um, and that's a big part of, uh, that's a, that is a very big part of our job. <clears throat> I feel a little more confident now that we have one veteran on our town council that can come to bat for us. I, I don't feel confident. I feel fortunate. <laughs> uh, it, it's amazing. And that's a great segue into my next uh, item here. I, uh, I, I did listen to town council last night, Bob. Um, do you want to say anything about the soldiers and sellers monument and, and where that might um, yeah, sure. The, the first thing to say, and I know I sent you something to write a couple of months ago, as every other commission board and committee in town, you just have to make sure that you adhere to sections 9.19 through 9.27 of the town bylaws. And you can have a mission statement if you want, it's not required, but that is the area that deals with that governs in fact it's called governance of multiple member bodies of which you are one the other thing that you all may want to consider in the future is do you want to submit a, your own separate report into the annual town report now i know that dave does one in his capacity as the veteran service officer but you should decide as the veterans advisory board whether you want to have your own insertion into the annual town report Right now you do not, but if that's something you choose to do, you'll talk with the bylaws review committee and Paul knows Dan Lieber and they will work with you. The bylaws review committee will work with you on whether you want to insert yourself into the language of the annual town report, which would just list you as one of the bodies that has to file a report. But that's your prerogative whether you want to do that or not. Because I think the town's perspective is since Dave has to do it as um, the veteran service officer, that's sufficient. But if you all want to augment that, you can do that. Um, that the, good news I, the good news I have for you is, I don't know how many of you are familiar with ARPA funds, American Rescue Plan Act funds, but that's a federal program, COVID related, that dispensed dollars to municipalities. And Wakefield got about eight million dollars some of it was spent during the the, uh, the worst parts of covid we have about 6.2 million dollars left and last night was the first time that the town council decided to allocate a lot of that money um one of the items that was not on the list was the soldiers and sailors memorial which is in the middle of town and was created in 1902. so the town council was kind enough to give me a few minutes to provide my history of um, the memorial, uh, the needs for, uh, for repair, the fact that there were estimates done in 2007, but it needs additional testing to really discern what is the extent of the damage to it. And um, we haven't done anything since the 2007 assessment. So after a long discussion, 
Um, the town council agreed to allocate $10,000 last night so that we can get repairs, an estimate for repairs for the memorial. I spoke with um, Nancy Bertrand this morning at the Historical Commission, and she's going to work with Steve Mayo in terms of getting that money. She knows the name of the organization that did the assessment back in 2007. That's a granite structure that requires a specialist to come in. They have to do a test called a radiography. Um, surprisingly, and I pointed this out last night, the estimate for doing the test was only $3,482 back in 2007. And for some inexplicable reason, the town never allocated any money to get the test done. Now we're sitting in 2022, and I can imagine that the condition of that has worsened over time. So we got the money last night for that. And the arrangement that I have with my colleagues on the town council is after we have the test done and we have a determination of what the estimated cost of repair is, then I'm going to go back to the town council and see if I can convince them to give us additional ARPA money towards the, um, the restoration of the memorial. Um, we are not a Community Preservation Act community, of which almost 200 municipalities in Massachusetts are. One of the things about if you are, if you are a CPA, then money is set aside for, among other things, preserving historic landmarks in town. Because we don't have that, we have to look at grants. But as I explained to the, my colleagues last night on town council, you can't apply for a lot of these grants, including the Veterage Heritage Grant in Massachusetts, no. until you have allocated funds. No. So we need allocated funds. I was only able to get the funds for the testing last night. Um, and then we can pursue getting additional funds further, which will allow us to apply for grants potentially. And then the third source of funding is frankly through the town budget. And that just hasn't been done in the 120 years that we've had that memorial it was built in 1902. So the good news is that we at least have moved the ball forward as far as being able to get testing done on the memorial. And then we'll see what state it's in, what the cost of restoration is, and where we can go to seek funding for that. Anyone have any questions? I think, I think Bob, I think the uh, Preservation Act has been brought up once or twice at town meeting and it's been voted down both times. Don't ask me why. If, that, well, the, last, the one and only time it was voted on was in 2002 and it lost by almost a two to one vote. And I don't know why, but it has not come back out for town ballot um, since. We discussed that a little bit last night as well. Obviously, that has tax ramifications, and there's certainly reasons why folks probably voted against that back in 2002. But it is a program that allows you to set aside monies, which the state also provides to you, for uh, affordable housing, for you know um, preservation of historic sites, open land. There's a lot of good benefits to it, but that's a longer discussion down the road for the town and the town council. But um, you know, the good news now is that at least we're able to, to get the requisite um, work testing done on the memorial. Bob, so let me get this straight if I'm following this correctly. If the town, if the restoration uh, uh, cost was ex excess of say $50,000 and the town council allocated $25,000 towards it, would the matching fund of twenty-five thousand come from the grants to hit that number, so we can get the repair work done? Well, that's one way to do it. I mean, the Veterans Heritage Grant that only gives you a maximum of fifteen thousand dollars as a matching grant. Of course, you have to apply. There's also the Massachusetts Preservation—I forget the exact term—grant. Last year, they allocated $800,000 for 17 projects around the state. So that's an average of about $40,000. Frankly, what I asked for last night was about 65,000, 40 so we could apply for that grant, 15 so we could apply for the heritage grant and the remainder to do the testing. Um, I failed to get the town, town council to agree to allocate that much money. So the fallback position was to grant the 10,000 for the testing and then once we get the estimate, then I, I can go back and see if I can get an amount of money so that we can at least try to match that with state grants. But there's no guarantee we're going to get the state grant either. I'll have to also see how much ARPA money is left um, 
to see whether we can get how much, what percentage of the restoration we can get potentially through ARPA funds. There's no guarantee that we'll get any, but um, there, there's a lot of different things working on this. But the main thing right now is to try to figure out what's the cost of restoration. In 2007, the estimate ranged anywhere from 80,000 to 150,000, depending on the test results. Um, if you've gone to that memorial recently, you've got the main part of the memorial and you got four pest of, um, uh, the, the, each of the soldiers and sailors, the four of them sit around it, right? And now there's gaps in the joints there. And of course, some of the figures are missing limbs. Uh, some of it from vandal, vandal um, they were vandalized uh, back in the early 1970s. So all those things have to go into consideration to figure out what the cost is. And then we can potentially down the road uh, apply for um, matching grants. There's just no guarantee you're going to get the matching grant. It's a very competitive. Both of them are very competitive programs. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. That answered my question. Well, I the, think the, the, that, the other the, the key is that we have to get the you have to take a small step and the town has to show interest and commit some funds. Other without that, you're not going to be eligible to even apply for the grants. Okay. That's correct. Cool. So you you accomplished that last night at town meeting, and I thought that was huge. So we did get the ball. You did, did, Bob. You got the ball rolling last night. Well, I appreciate that. Back, back in the day, two thousand. What was it? Seven. They got the S yeah. And I think both of us might have been on this, the the uh, board. Um, it was even possibly even more than that. Maybe two hundred fifty thousand. God knows what it would be today. It's a big well, undertaking. I wasn't on the board then. I was stationed in Washington, D.C. That was years before I moved here. But um, you no, know, the estimate back then, I, I have it here in my records. It was upwards of 150. But then what happened is the veteran service officer in 2015 revisited the issue with the people that gave us the original estimate. And they indicated that the cost had gone up anywhere from 10 to 20% from the 07 figures. So that's why it went up to almost like 250,000. But yeah. once again, yeah. those are just numbers thrown out there that really aren't accurate because we don't have the requisite test done. So as Paul said, we'll get the first step done and then I'll brief you guys on where we are from there. And I think part of it was whether they do the restoration here in Wakefield on the common, which might take over a year uh, bring it back to Vermont and do it there. That's correct. Those those are decisions down the road, though. Any other questions on the uh, Soldiers and Sailors Monument? Okay. Um, the next item up, I, 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 Jay Panette just chimed in, and I. Uh, I see he's here, he's on mute, but uh, reads across America. And I just wanted uh, Jay to, I invited him back to the board to just kind of some, give us a summary on where we are with the reads for the program uh, at uh, Forest Glade Cemetery on December 17, on Saturday, December 17. Jay, welcome, welcome. And thank you, hi folks. Um, to date, we have uh, 357 out of 430 wreaths um, sponsored. Um, you know, we we came into 2022 with uh, 244 wreaths sponsored. So we've we've gotten like 112 wreaths or so to date. Um, yeah, you know, we still have some time. We have a couple of weeks till mail ends. I know that I was approached by a neighbor today who's looking for uh, information on mailing in uh, things to sponsor some wreaths. Tom Lyons reached out to me today. The Semper Fidelis Society in Boston wants to sponsor some wreaths. And I plan on putting uh, uh, a letter in the item uh, bringing everyone up to speed on uh, the fact that this program exists because, you know, not a lot of folks are on social media, et cetera. I mean, we have, uh, you know, uh, you know, only what? Uh, what, 112 wreaths? Uh, no, 357, 430, 43, 
70 some uh, wreaths still to go. You know, um, you know, we haven't done like last year, we were able to get a an insert in the daily item, a color insert that everyone that subscribes to the item got. You know, we, we won't be able to get that this year for a number of reasons. So, you know, I think, um, you know, we'll probably, I, I feel confident that we'll meet our number, um, you know, which covers not only the graves at Forest Glade and the various monuments around the cemetery, et, et cetera. Uh, we, uh, unless we really pick up exponentially, we won't come into 2023 as healthy as we did in 2022, but, you know, the people in Wakefield always rally and, you know, we'll, we hopefully will be in good shape. Um, you had mentioned you want to put that flyer in the item. No, I think I'll put a, uh, well, we, we, Brian McCubrey was always the contact we had at the item and he right. was able to get um, letters, et cetera, put in. And last year they had a, an eight and a half by 11 cut sheet that everyone got inside their daily item. I don't know if we'll able, be able to pull that off. I'll reach out to Brian to see if we can do such. Uh, it's the, the flyer that uh, you had on the table at uh, vet, the Veterans Day observance. Uh, last year, they everyone that got an item had that in their paper. So um, that we got a lot of traction from that last year. So I'll at least put a letter in the item, uh, bringing people up to speed that the pro project exists, looking for donations, et cetera. So hopefully that'll push us over the edge. Yeah, I'm wondering, uh, 75 is a very small number to achieve. Um, yeah, and that hasn't changed much today. Uh, yeah, I put a blurb up on the Wakefield Community Facebook uh, was it last night or this morning. I don't remember. Okay. <clears throat> so the reeds are then uh, delivered to Forest Glade Cemetery. Yeah. Uh, Dennis DeFazio yep. picks them up. Yeah, no, the, there's a tractor trailer that will come to Forest Glade and they back up the driveway, drop all the boxes. Uh, they, we distribute them in rows, then the truck takes off, and then the volunteers um, show up. We uh, open up the boxes, distribute the wreaths, and we're on our way. Okay, and we'll have a small ceremony with a... Uh, yep, just there's a, a ceremony that uh, Wreaths Across America scripts. Yep. Um, you know, Dennis says, in the past, Dennis has set apart, I've set apart... Um, you know, it's, it's short and sweet, and the, the entire event uh, is generally over in less than a half an hour. Um, we've done it in knee-deep snow, and we've done it with no snow. So who knows where we're going to be this year. Have you engaged uh, WCAT in the past? Uh, they've, they haven't been there in the past. Uh, we, uh, they, Barbara, I spoke with Barbara on Veterans Day. She wants to put a, um, a one pager, if you will, up on WCAT, uh, okay. similar to the one that we uh, had on the uh, on vet, the table at Veterans Day. So she'll put that up on WCAT. We have not had them uh, on site, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, there's nothing to say that we can't. Okay. No, that uh, just. Uh... Uh, checking in. It's always good to have them uh, if we can, and they're available. So um, yeah, they're it's a, uh, they're an awesome resource. Yeah, and well, the other part of that is it's uh, it, largely weather dependent as to what <laughs> they're going to be able to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think Paul that uh, WCAP might be able to pick up. I think Reeds Across America has some little one or two minute clips that yep. basically give the story, and maybe they could run those uh, if they have the rights to run them. I don't know. Yeah, I've got the contacts at, at um, Reese Across America. I can I can connect the two organizations to share some of that information. Um, but no, it's a, I'm, I'm just trying to leverage a resource that we have in town and 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 make the make the most of it um, to help get the word out. Um, the um, yeah. So uh, the other thing, just for everybody's edification, they're 
the, the, the cable television is kind of sort of in decline, but WCAT is picking up on the streaming services um, for future revenue and opportunities. So um, they are an excellent source for uh, what gets put out on YouTube about the town, what gets put out on social media about the town. And uh, they also work with Jen McDonald um, up in town hall um, to get the information out. Um, so by engaging them, it uh, kind of escalates the communication uh, and, and, and the positive uh, pieces that the town is doing on behalf of veterans, their families, and um, this important program for Reads Across America. Anybody have any questions for Jay about Reads Across America? Jay, thank you very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Good to see you guys. Good to see you Jay. too. Hey, Stay well, we'll see hey, you. Just before, before you leave, I, I, I already said it, you weren't here. I could not have done that uh, program on Friday without your help on previous programs. Thank it, you very much. It was much. absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. You built a good foundation, Jay, typical yeah. of every Marine, I think. You, you, <laughs> keep, you keep raising the bar and, you know, uh, is, I, I tell you, we haven't found anyone better than Rabbi Greg. He is awesome. He, he is, he's good. And he appreciates it so much just being able to be there. And there was no Gumby's this year. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll see you all soon. Take care. All right. Bye, thank Jay. you, Jay. Okay, thank Bye. You. Um, any other business from the board members? So, uh, Rob, next meeting, I got this all messed up last month. I have uh, Tuesday, December 20th. Sounds um, right. And I'm, I'll pass this around the board just for thought and consideration. I'm open to a, to meeting in person and it doesn't have to be at 630 in the evening. It could be, uh, it could be at 630. It could be over a cup of coffee on a Saturday. I don't, um, it could be in town hall. Uh, it is the holidays. If you want to stick to this format, I'm okay with that too. Um, but, uh, just maybe meeting in person for the holidays might be something fun to do. Just a thought on a, on a Tuesday. Um, any, any reaction from folks? I'm fine either way. Yeah. Fine with me. Okay. Um, we'll stick to the Tuesday. Um, we just need to find a location at 6.30 to kind of meet. And, and uh, WCAT is also available. We can meet there. They have a small room um, that we could use. Uh, so those are, those are just some options. The, um, just looking ahead, uh, I've got January 17th, which is the third Tuesday of the month. I don't see any problem with that. Um, but I will say that looking forward to February 2023, February 21st, it looks like that falls in the middle of uh, the February vacation. Yeah. And I don't know if we've done that in the past or not, um, but that might be, I'm speaking as the uh, spouse of a school teacher. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, I, I mean, uh, she's definitely going to want to be someplace else. Um, so, and she likes to drag me with her. The, um, but you, uh, those of you who have kids and family and everybody else, are, they're going to be off from school that week. I don't know if that's a, if we need to change that date. We have plenty of time, but I just wanted to kind of point that out to everybody on the board. Uh, that that might we may need to adjust that day a little bit. So, Paul, is it the nineteenth, uh, the twentieth, or the twenty fourth of vacation? Uh, the twentieth of December. I, I don't think is school vacation. No, February. I'm talking February vacation. Uh, uh, February vacation is the week of the twentieth. Yes. Okay, so the twenty eighth would work, wouldn't it? The twenty eighth would work. Yes. Well, just pencil it in for now. 
Yeah, why don't, we, why don't we pencil in the 28th for February? That's a good idea. Any objections to the 28th of February, 2023? No. Nope. February is a cold month. I recommend doing the Zoom. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. And December will be what fall then? The uh, 21st? Wow. 20th. The 20th. 20th. Yeah. Okay. 20th. Sounds good. Yeah. And and that that would be the next meeting. Uh, let me just off the top of my head, it might be a good idea to just do that at WCAT. They have a small the conference. What huh? On the 20th, you uh, Dex, Dex on, on the 20th at uh, on yeah. That's a Tuesday. That is, that's a Tuesday. Tuesday. That's a Tuesday. That's a Tuesday. <laughs> What's up, Dan? I think school committee at WCAT on Tuesdays. They're going to be in the studio. We could be in the conference room. Okay. You know, we're not that big. Um. But let me, I'll follow up with them at WCAT. I'll send a note to Barbara. Um, there are other locations. The library might be a place, uh, you know, I'm just town halls another place, but but if, I, if we're sticking to 6.30 in the evening, um, I, you know, I, we might even be able to use the back room at Dockside, okay? okay. Which might work, okay? Um, so, more to follow on on that date, and and the fallback is we'll just do the Zoom on the twentieth, you know, at six thirty. But let me see what we can do to put it to get together. And I would say, you know, you can, we'll go through the meeting, and you know, we'll just make it. We can have some fun with it. That's all. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be a little festive. Everything will be over by then. Veterans Day. <laughs> yeah there'll be some other things to go on um anything else that we need to cover any questions no. joe <clears throat> you got anything no robert you got anything from uh, the other side of the globe there no sir i'm good is the sun coming good. up yet no not yet another half hour or so oh and is, is the weather warm over there? Yeah, it's it's been in the low 80s every day. It's beautiful. Oh boy. Okay. Well, I need a motion to adjourn if we would like to adjourn on time. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Uh, Aye. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time and your support. I appreciate all you do. Have a good Thank night. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. Yeah, you can be there. If you wanted to encourage him as a liaison, mm. if they have it. At the studio, yeah. yeah. But you you can't say anything at the no, meeting. You can't no, vote, no. and you can't. No, yeah. no. no, absolutely. But that's uh, Tuesday. They have school committee. Um, I don't really have the ability to to uh, do the video on that. Because if it's a public meeting, I don't know. You have to post it in the paper. Mm. It has to be available for other people. But whatever. Oh, can't get rid of that.